Okay, welcome back. Uh, we are talking about intercession in prayer, uh, and we'll continue from where we just stopped. As I see here, there is a question in the chat. It says, if it's God's nature, why should we appeal to God to act upon his nature? So, uh, okay, very good question. You see, God, you know, he, he provides a space for man to engage, okay? This is also uh, a question you can ask with regard to faith. You know, if God is a good God and he uh, blesses his people, for example, Abraham, okay, for Abraham to have a child, you think it was God's will for Abraham to have a child? We know because Abraham had that desire and God also told him you know, that he would uh, bless him uh, with a child. Now, why should uh, Abraham believe and have faith if God intends to give him a child? Okay, we can ask the same question. In a, in a sense, uh, you know, we are saying if God is all able, you know, he is sovereign, he is om omnipotent, he can, why can't he just do it? But somehow we see that, you know, God is a God, he wants man to co-work with him, and which is why faith is important. Okay, in the case of Abraham, that's what we learn. So God required faith on the part of Abraham to be able to release that promise and blessing into his life. Similarly, when it comes to other situations, uh, our prayer, our intercession has a role to play. Can God not do it on his own? He can. But he has chosen to co-work with us. I hope it makes sense. Uh, is that Rin asking the question? Uh, I think 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9. Let me quickly pull it out for you. Okay, it just reveals uh, God's, God's method while you know, working with us. So I posted in the chat, First Corinthians 3 and verse 9. It says, for we are God's fellow workers. Some translations say co-workers. So we are God's fellow workers, co-workers. Which is why, though it is in the nature of God to bring justice, though it is in the nature of God to pour out mercy, he does require some people to step in and co-work with him to make it happen. Like Elijah, we saw that in the last class, persistent prayer. And God already said, why should Elijah pray? He prayed seven times. So you see that we are God's fellow workers. So there are things in the kingdom of God which will not happen if you and I don't step in. Okay, The gospel must be preached to all the nations of the world. Then the end shall come. So we have a responsibility. Can people not know the gospel without us? Can God not send angels? Can God not you know, send a voice from heaven to tell all the people that he is the savior? He can, but he won't. Because scripture has already revealed to us. We have to go. Go ye to all the world and preach the gospel. Uh, make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And, you know, behold, I am with you always. So God wants man to co-labor. Okay. Uh, that is the reason why he wants intercessors, because we are co-laborers. Okay. Let's proceed from where we had stopped. We said Abraham uh, became an intercessor. 
and God actually was uh, listening to him, responding to his prayers. So uh, that's very encouraging. Similarly, you would find in the case of Moses, the people uh, who Moses was leading, they were not the easiest, you know, of, of uh, uh, people to lead because they were they were caught up in their own, uh, you know, uh, things that they thought were important, things of the past. So as, you know, some preachers put it, they left Egypt, but Egypt did not leave them. So they still wanted the luxuries you know, of the land of Egypt, but they forgot all about the miracles that God had done. So what kind of people are uh, these people who can forget the glory of God so easily and remember the uh, the worldly things, which which are not great compared to what God did in their lives? You know, parting the Red Sea and uh, you know, you know, bringing like a pillar of uh, fire by night and cloud by day. God did amazing wonders in their lives but it just shows us that they were very hard-hearted so you would see the conversations of moses and uh, uh, god there are some passages given in the notes i won't be reading it out for us but in these passages you would see you know god say that oh i'm going to punish these people because they are, they have such a hard heart they have such a uh, wandering heart it goes away from who i am and what i have done into their own worldly desires so god says you know i will put pestilence on them i will do this i will do that so in those moments you would find that moses begins to intercede and he says you know god have mercy on these people you know you are the god who brought them out if you destroy these people what will the nations uh, say about you you know so he begins to intercede just the way abraham interceded to what God, you know, there is a provision in God for mercy, isn't it? So Moses also was aware of that. And so he begins to intercede for mercy, for forgiveness, for redemption. And he says, God, you know, give them another chance. Uh, please you know, don't destroy them. Uh, and God always relents. So you see, God will respond when it is part of his nature. Now, if we try and intercede for something which is not given in the word of God or which is not in the nature of God, like, you know, I have already, when we began these classes about prayer and intercession, I gave us some examples. If we say, oh God, you know, you curse that person or, you know, you bring destruction on, on people. Such prayers, such intercessions are not valid because... In the nature of God, we don't see that. Nowhere in scripture you know, does it say, I, I want to curse. But the nature of God, you see that God is always wanting to be gracious. Okay, He's always wanting to forgive. But it's the people when they don't respond or they become hard-hearted that, you know, that mercy doesn't come upon them. Isn't it? So, when we appeal to what is already there in the word, or in other words, <coughs> sorry. Yeah, so I was saying, when we, in other words, when we have faith in who God is, and what he has already spoken, we can pray in line with it. Okay. And when we are doing that for others, that is called as intercession. So Moses knew that God is a God of great mercy. He wanted to reveal his glory through the children of Israel. And so you would also see in the conversations that Moses has with God, he would say things like, God, you had promised to Abraham. You had promised to Isaac, you know. So he's reminding God. Why is he reminding God? Has God forgotten what he spoke? Probably, obviously, no. God is not a God who can forget, you know, his own uh, uh, promises. But this is the role of an intercessor. To 
stand on the word of God, right? To stand on the word of God and to say, God, you have spoken in your word and you will bring it to pass. So Abraham interceded, so did Moses. So there's a question in the chat. It says, so we can change God's will through intercession. Okay. <clears throat> so I was actually uh, looking forward to this question. I knew it would come. So the way you've put it, uh, uh, Rin, is change God's will through intercession. So can we do that? The answer is no. We cannot change God's will through intercession. And which is why I've been saying we can appeal to what is in the nature of God or in other words, we can have faith in what God has already spoken or revealed. Okay, so intercession is what? Intercession is you're not going outside the word of God. So you're not going outside the will of God. You're asking for things which are in the will of God. Does it make sense? Yes, Pastor, but um, like how you were giving an example, like how God was planning to uh, destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, and that was his will, what he was going to do. But uh, when Abraham interceded, God changed it, right? By. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I, I see where you are coming from. But Arin, see, justice is in the nature of God. Okay. So when he sees unrighteousness, he responds with, you know, his uh, nature where he wants to bring justice and says, hey, this is wrong. This should be punished. Because he's a holy God. Otherwise, he would be unfair. Okay. Now, that we understand. But Moses and Abraham also knew that there is mercy in God. So they begin to pray and say, God, no, forgive, forgive, don't destroy. Okay. So both of these are not <coughs> outside of God. Him wanting to punish is part of his nature. Him relenting or him giving into the requests of Abraham and Moses is also part of his nature. So it's very much in the will of God. He wanted someone to ask though, which thankfully Abraham and Moses did. Uh, did, did you get that? Yes, Pastor. Yes. All right. Thank you. OK. So I see uh, another question here in the chat. It is God's will to forgive sins that have been confessed it is god's will to forgive sins that have been confessed <clears throat> yes sir nina so going by you know one john chapter one verses seven through nine and see if i can pull it out for you Yes. So <clears throat> here, uh, I'll just post the scripture. Or maybe just verse 9, I will post it for us. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. Yeah. So it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's right. So when we confess, God can forgive us. OK. <clears throat> and there's a follow-up question to that earlier question where, uh, Nina, you're saying Abraham and Moses were appealing to. Yeah, you could say so. You know, They knew that um, you know, God can forgive. Unfortunately, you don't see the people repenting in, in the in the situation, no, Nina. 
at least the Sodom and Gomorrah people. But <laughs> you know, we notice that Moses, in the case of Moses, because he was the leader of the people. He was, in a sense, repenting on behalf of the people. OK? So yeah, you could say that he was confessing the sins See, of the people. Uh, uh, if I may say, he was, he was doing the intercessions. Yeah, sure. We were talking about intercession. So Abraham, and I mean, I was also keeping in mind what uh, Rin was asking with the God's will could be changed. So uh, I mean, yeah, we understood that obviously not. But then uh, if it was God's nature to forgive and Moses and Abraham were appealing to that nature of God and saying, you know, standing in the gap and saying, please don't hold this sin against them and forgive them. Isn't what isn't that what they were doing in this particular, whether it is Sodom and Gomorrah and the other sins of the people that Moses was praying to God for? I mean, on behalf of the people, is it that way? OK, so uh, could you please come again, that conclusion, that point of conclusion? No, I was saying that since, I mean, the, since we're talking about the role of intercession that yes. uh, Abraham and Moses uh, played, so they were doing it uh, appealing to the nature of God because it's his will to forgive also, isn't it? So they were uh, repenting of, like you said, the people didn't repent, yes. But since they were interceding, were they praying for the sins of the people that God would not hold that against the people? And that is why asking God to have mercy. So in that way, it is God's nature to forgive and to have mercy. And so they were appealing to that. Is that it? Yes, you are right, Nina. Yeah. That is yeah. correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So they were, in a sense, yeah. confessing on behalf of the people. Of the people. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank right. you. No problem. So here we, <clears throat> in these two situations, of course, we see that in the case of Abraham, the people don't um, get forgiven. You know, Sodom and Gomorrah is destroyed because they're just so sinful. You know, it, it's even beyond Abraham's um, intercession or his, you know, you want to say, negotiation with God. It was just beyond that. But in the case of Moses, there is another dynamics that comes into play. Moses is the leader of these <coughs> Israelites. So another thought that I want to bring uh, to us is that you know when there is when there is leadership, okay, there is an influence. <coughs> which the leadership has on the people who have been entrusted to the leadership. So intercession becomes very, very crucial when we are leading people. You know, we can't just say that, OK, I will follow all the leadership principles. I will do this and that and you know other, other stuff. And that, that will be enough. But <coughs> sorry, there is a role that Prayer and intercession also plays when we lead people. So we cover people with our prayers. In other words, there is a passage here in our notes itself. It's Hosea 12 and verse 13. Could somebody please read it? Hosea 12 and verse 13. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet, he was preserved. Yeah, thank you, Ritz. So you see there, by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Very clear. Who was that prophet? Moses. Okay. And it also adds, by a prophet, he was preserved. So. This preservation is what we talked about in uh, prophetic intercession. Remember that word prof preserved is shamar, which protects, which uh, covers the people. So how did Moses cover the people? The people would have been destroyed by God if he were not to intercede. But as a leader, he knew a very, very 
important truth. What is that truth? The truth is a leader must pray for his people. So when we pray for the people, you know, that is when you know the, the people are able to see the work of God on their lives. So it's a role of a leader to stand before God on behalf of his or her people. Okay, let's move on. So we're talking about intercession and we've seen the roles of um, Abraham, we've seen the role of Moses. <clears throat> and we were saying that intercession is um, very important and it also is uh, necessary and especially at times when you know you say that <coughs> someone's going through a very hard time now many of us you know uh, could have gone through periods of um, uh, sickness or periods of uh, you know great trials or <coughs> periods of great um, perseverance where we needed to wait you know for a breakthrough to come so these are all times when we feel that we are under tremendous pressure and you know when we have somebody praying for us you know it <clears throat> makes it so much more easier and you know uh it's it's nice to know that we have support if not physically people being there with us helping us at least in prayer we know that they are standing with us in prayer so the Bible, uh, Job is a person who went through many difficulties and trials. And in the midst of his difficulties, he says this. So Job 9, verse 32 and verse 33. Uh, could I request someone to please read it? It's in our notes too. Job 9, verse 32 and 33. For he is not a man as I am, that I may answer him, and that we should go to court together. Nor is there any mediator between us who may lay his hand on us both. Yes, thank you, Krisha. So, you know, uh, here there is a request that Job has, and that is, you know, he <coughs> wants somebody to go before God for him. And verse 33, you know, he says, nor is there any mediator between us. So between God and him, he's asking for a go-between. We discussed that earlier. He's asking for a reconciler. Or he's asking for an intercessor. So if he had a person who could go <clears throat> and pray on behalf of Job, that is you know, something that, you know, we know would have comforted Job in his trials and difficulties. Once again, you know, in the passage of Job 16, <clears throat> we see a desire which Job has for somebody to pray for him. So Job 16 and verse 21, he says, Oh, that one might plead for a man with God as a man pleads for his neighbor. So he's asking for an intercessor. So in difficulties and or in times of uh, you know trials, we all have experienced that need. That oh, I wish there was somebody. You know, I wish there was a person praying on behalf of me. Or you know, when people tell us when we are going through a tough uh, you know rough patch and say, people say. I'm praying for you. And I, I hope they are really praying for us. You know, they're not just simply saying I'm praying for you, but that they are praying. You know, that is such a great strength. So we see that in the life of Job, that he was really wanting for somebody to pray for him. Okay. And so there is a need for intercessors. Um, and uh, we should recognize that. So when we see other people going through tough situations. <laughs> we must know that, hey, I can, you know, we say ministry, ministry, oh, I want to do ministry. You know, when we pray for somebody, we hear that somebody is going through a, a, a challenging time. Even just praying for them is ministry, isn't it? So 
they are in need of our prayers and we see in scripture that god has given provision for that that someone can pray for another person so the way job desired an intercessor in his troubles we today can pray for others when they are in times of need okay and it is possible that you know um, people in their challenges are so uh, you know bogged down that they are even unable to pray i heard people say that sometimes you know they were just so sick that they couldn't pray or they were going through such a uh, you know hard phase of depression that they couldn't pray so it's possible that that individual is not able to pray also which is another reason why god might encourage others and say hey why don't you pray for that person who is in difficulty okay so there is a need for intercessors i'm just looking at the chat here this says if we have more people interceding for us the prayer would be more powerful okay so when it comes to we'll talk about you know group prayer corporate prayer a little bit later but here is uh, my understanding yes uh, the more the number of people praying the prayer does become powerful <coughs> sorry about my throat everyone yeah however all the other foundations for prayer that we studied earlier you know that has to be in place so when let's say two or three people they are praying in faith <clears throat> as compared to 50 people who are not praying in faith which is more effective two three people praying in faith is more effective than lots of people praying without faith okay so the point is <clears throat> numbers help provided we go by you know the principles of effective prayer or the right foundations all right so coming to the next question here in job situation did he have jesus as his intercessor okay nice question in job's case did he have jesus as his intercessor i would say mm, i would say no because jesus had not yet come and what did we say him dying on the cross was an act of intercession isn't it so he never performed that act and after he ascended up into heaven he continues to be our intercessor he makes intercession for us and he is our advocate on the basis of the work which he did so when job job is one of the early books of the bible and at that point jesus had not yet come so we cannot say that uh, you know jesus was his intercessor we can't say that okay yeah any any follow up questions to that or is that uh, okay all right good good questions there so uh, so far we've understood that we are in need of prayers you know when uh, we go through tough times similarly whenever we hear that somebody else is going through something it's a good thing for us to pray for others pray for others even if they don't ask us if the holy spirit <coughs> impresses it on our hearts we must pray for others okay let's move on so we've understood that uh, intercession is a need and also that god himself looks for intercessors okay it's like the conversation we had where we said can god not provide mercy why does god uh, you know want someone to come and intercede but that's how it is he is a god of justice 
but he wants someone a human person to come and pray for mercy or forgiveness and therefore we conclude that god looks for intercessors can we all quickly turn to two passages of scripture or two verses isaiah 59 and verse 16 one person can please read that and the other one is ezekiel 22 and verse 30 so isaiah 59 and verse 16 ezekiel 22 and verse 30 okay Isaiah fifty nine sixteen. He was amazed to see that no one intervened to help the oppressed. So he himself stepped in to save them with his strong arm, and his justice sustained him. Okay. Ah, uh, can we proceed with the next uh, verse, please? So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it, but I found no one. All right. So um, this basically talks about you know God looking for an intercessor. Okay. So God uh, wants a co-worker. That's when you know we will see uh, him. move uh, in a certain way okay so so far we've understood that so god is looking for one intercessor in fact ezekiel uh, can you please read that again read so i sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that i should not destroy it but i found no one yeah thank you so much so we can see it so clearly over here that god is saying for him to um you know not destroy or grant mercy he is looking for a human agent he is looking for a person so it sounds you know like god why do you need a human being to help you but that's how it is in the dynamics of the kingdom of god we saw that scripture isn't it first corinthians 3 9 where we are co-workers with christ so god has chosen to need us when he created the earth what did we see genesis 1 26 27 he made us in the image of god and he gave us authority gave us dominion and he said you go now you subdue you rule over so there is a task or a job that we need to do and we must always remember that that's where intercession comes into play so it's a role which god has assigned man and said if you pray these things will happen and which is why here in ezekiel the scripture is saying he is looking or he sought he sought for how many people how many people does it say how many people is god looking for to pray one exactly so that's amazing that even one person pray you know sometimes we say oh uh, if i pray i don't think god can answer it has got to be a crowd you know we do understand that in certain situations like especially when you pray for a nation or pray for a region or pray for a city it's good to have the strength of numbers however even one person you see even one person if god had only one person he says i wouldn't destroy the people he's looking for how many people is there at least one person who will intercede if there is one person who will intercede then you know i will not destroy the people so god is looking for co-workers co-laborers intercessors to see his will released here on the earth though god is sovereign he chooses to work with intercessors okay that's how we understand these passages of scripture let's proceed so so far we saw how 
people who have been disobedient, who have gone away from God, you know. An intercessor begins to pray, like an Abraham or a Moses. In the case of Ezekiel, we saw God is looking for an intercessor. So when these intercessors pray, God's mercy is extended on the people. So usually, usually, when it comes to people moving away from God or people we would say uh, going astray or wandering uh, from God, there's always a need for somebody to intercede for them. So we, as God's people, we can begin to pray for you know those who have fallen away from God, those who don't understand God's love, those who are living their own you know worldly lives, unsurrendered to God, or they are. Uh, are not confessing their sins, what can we do? You know, we can pray for them. We can say, God, you know, you cause your grace, you cause your mercy to fall upon such people. Lord, you grant repentance of heart to such people. You draw them into the kingdom of God. Lord, you remove the blindness. Uh, uh, the Bible says those who are not saved, isn't it unbelievers? They Why are they in that state because there is another reason uh, satan he puts blindness on their eyes in, in the book of corinthians paul writes to the the church he says look satan has blinded the eyes of these unbelievers so when we pray what are we doing we are pleading before god for that blindness to come off we are pleading before God for him to extend grace, extend mercy. So there is a great need, especially when it comes to bringing people into the kingdom of God or for people to be saved or for people who have been saved and maybe for whatever reason they have gone away from the things of the kingdom. You know, when we intercede for them, they can come back. Let's look at, uh, you know, a verse here. Uh, let's turn to James chapter 5 and verse 16. If someone is already there, you can read it. James 5 and verse 16. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Okay. So confess your, uh, thanks, Rin. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another, it says. So confess your trespasses, meaning if we have gone away from God, Right? When we have gone away from God, what do we do? We confess, we come back, uh, and we pray for each other. Then what happens? The result is we will be healed. And it continues to say the effective or fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So that portion, the effective fervent prayer, fervent prayer is earnest prayer it's consistent prayer it's persevering prayer that means that there's got to be prayer made regularly and constantly you know before god when such prayers are made they are very effective that uh, one reaps a lot of benefits when there is this kind of earnest prayer you know persistent prayer that goes before God, and especially when it comes to people who are not saved or who have gone away in some manner from you know the ways of God, others praying for them regularly, consistently, it really makes a huge difference. So we should uh, make sure that we pray in such scenarios. Okay, so when we uh, talk about intercession, the, uh, one of us mentioned that the Holy Spirit is there to help us. So in intercession, you know, it's a great encouragement to know that I don't have to do this alone. I have the enabling of the Holy Spirit 
Okay, and the Holy Spirit has Jesus said, you know, I'm going to the Father, but I will send you another helper. Who is this another helper? This another helper of the same kind is the Holy Spirit. So right now, the Holy Spirit is with us and he helps us in different things and various ways. One of the aspects in which he helps us is our intercession. You know, we may feel that uh, oh, it's so hard to keep praying for an unbelieving, uh, you know, a parent or an unbelieving uh, sibling or an unbelieving friend. And sometimes we become so tired, like, oh, when are these people going to uh, understand about the love of God? But, you know, in a uh, perseverance in prayer as intercessors for all these people whom we love, we can take the help or the support of the Holy Spirit. We don't have to do it in our own strength. Because Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10, it addresses the Holy Spirit as the spirit of grace and supplication. He is the spirit of grace and supplication so remember when we studied about the kinds of prayers we said supplication an earnest plea before god so who is the holy spirit he has a role to play in intercession he's called as the spirit of supplication so that earnest plea before god can come through the empowering of the holy spirit is the spirit of grace and supplication. So when I'm praying for somebody, what do I do? I say, Holy Spirit, help me. Help me. Because you know how to do it. So we do the praying. I already you know, clarified that to us. We do the praying, but the Holy Spirit becomes our helper in intercession. So he helps us. Uh, you know, uh, bring the supplications before God. And Romans 8, you know, very beautifully pointed out earlier on, even there we see the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. So help means what? Help is like, you know, when uh, we are not able to, let's say there is a box. It's very heavy, okay? And one of us is carrying that box. Somebody else comes and they lend their support and they also hold the box with us. It becomes easier, isn't it? So that is, uh, we are holding it, but there is another person supporting it. So you can look at it in that way. The help of the Holy Spirit is to aid us or support us where he comes and he strengthens. When I'm not able to hold up those prayers, he comes and he puts his hands under our hands and says, hey, I'm giving you the strength you need to hold on to these prayers, to keep interceding and not stop till you see the results. So we have the help of the Holy Spirit. He helps us in our weaknesses and enables us to continue praying so that you know we are able to receive the answers for our prayers. So I'm just going to touch upon a few things that are so necessary when we intercede for others. And that will make our intercession effective. So far, we understood what intercession is and that we need to pray for others. And when we feel weak to pray for others, the Holy Spirit will help us. But how should we intercede for others? And that is what I'm going to share with us now, you know, quickly. So a couple of things that we must remember when we intercede for others is we must uh, have God's love and compassion for people so obviously when we don't care it's very hard to pray isn't it because uh, in our hearts we don't think it's important enough you know if someone comes and shares with us hey you know uh, i'm going through uh, this problem in my relationship uh, with my spouse or i'm going through this problem in my relationship with my parents or my uh, you know my my workplace my colleagues or my siblings my children if we are not touched by it or moved by it, if you feel, ah, so what? I don't mind. I don't care. So when we carry a heart, uh, which is indifferent, it's that much harder to pray for them. But when we flow with a heart of love and compassion, intercession comes easier because it's almost like 
you can feel what they're going through or you are in their shoes and you know you you can you can uh, have that empathy for them right you can have that compassion uh, for them so having a heart of love and compassion for people is so important for intercession without that you know, we will not be able to intercede effectively so that is something we can uh, ask god for and say god touch my heart change my heart soften my heart give me a heart that feels for people that can move with your love for people and then you know it will be easier for us to intercede we should also have a desire to see a change in people's situation or you know change in circumstances so you know when we see that uh, somebody is uh, sick if we don't desire to see them healed you know we will not persevere in prayer for them so i must have a desire to see uh, the healing or see the person saved or see that person get a job or see that you know somebody come out of their difficulty so that desire is a motivator and uh, one must have such a desire in order to pray for others next it is identification identification is it's like how uh, romans 12 15 it says rejoice with those who rejoice weep with those who weep so in other words you know it's like you're feeling for those people if somebody is happy you know we pray prayers of thanks giving and say lord we are so grateful that this person has a breakthrough i am an intercessor after all you know i am not that person but on behalf of that person i'm able to rejoice in my prayers for them or it can be a, the other way around weep with those who weep you know, they may have lost something or they may have made a mistake or they may have sinned but an intercessor on behalf of the people you know, when they pray it's almost like they lost something or they have sinned you know uh, or you know they have committed that mistake so they go and they plead before god like god please have mercy um as if they are experiencing uh, what that actual person is going through. So to be able to identify with the people whom we are praying for is also very important. And two more very necessary things is to pray with boldness because we should have confidence in the word of God. We should come with faith before God. That's when our prayers are effective. You know, we don't pray uh, hoping, yeah, if god does it that will be great that will not be an effective intercession so come in faith knowing that god you said in your word you know moses he reminded god god don't you remember you promised abraham you promised isaac so you cannot destroy these people they are your people so speak god's word back to him and say god you said and therefore i believe you are going to do this in the life of so and so or you know someone else and finally perseverance we talked about that in the last class and we said you know the way elijah did not give up till he saw the result we don't give up till we see the unsaved person saved or the sick person healed or the person caught in financial difficulties blessed you know so persevere till you see the results so i'm just quickly looking at the chat here we're running out of time uh, we are interceding. Jesus also intercedes and then God hears our prayers. Okay, first, uh, for us, we can't pray directly to God like how Job did. Okay, I think I have answered those question, uh, that question already, so I will not dwell on that. Uh, the next one is people in critical situations, they make a promise to God and does not intercede, but God directly answers their prayer. Why is this? It, it's simply because God is gracious. Okay, uh, God is gracious, and that's why there are times when there are there is no prayer, there's no intercession. But even in those times, you know, God goes ahead and He works His miracles in people's lives. I hope I have answered your question. Uh, if not, please post on the stream page. You know, I will take up anything uh, more than this. You know, for you on the stream page, I don't want you to get late for your next class okay so if that's fine can we pray class we'll uh, wrap up uh, i want to request one of us to please lead in prayer and then uh, we will end this class for today
Did somebody please pray? Yes, Surya, please go ahead. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for being with us till the end of the class. And thank you for delivering your word of God uh, through Nancy Ramya, ma'am. And uh, thank you for uh, giving strength to go and to move forward in your word. And uh, thank you for leading the class. Uh, and thank you for providing everything what we are needed till now. And uh, uh, and bless the people who are this online and, and ma'am. Uh, bless the people who are in need. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for being everything for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Surya. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate you joining, uh, joining in today. All the best for your assignments, exams, and uh, we shall connect next week. Okay, any questions, thoughts, please feel free to post on the stream page. God bless you. Bye for now.